Now, we're going to look at how the Hunt Permanent Collection has been curated. A curator is someone who devises and implements plans for exhibitions. There are a few things that a curator has to think about when creating an exhibition. First is the concept. This is the theme or idea that ties the exhibition together. It links in to the relationships between the objects and artworks on display. This might be of the same time period, the same material, or perhaps a similar colour or motif or symbolism. In the Hunt Museum, we organise our objects by material, but also by chronology. An example is this section, which is prehistoric Ireland. They're organised by date, but also by material in the cases here. Here we are back in the captain's room. In this room, we've displayed our objects based on what they're made of. First of all, you can see that we have our paintings hung together on the walls. In this display case, we have our ceramics. In addition to being displayed based on the material they're made of, they're also displayed based on where they're from. For example, over here we have some of our Chinese ceramics. While on the next shelf you'll find a lot of ceramic from Ireland. And over here, we also have ceramics from parts of Europe, including Germany. As well as the galleries displaying the Hunt Museum's permanent collection, the Hunt Museum has a temporary exhibition gallery, constructed during the renovation work in the 1990s. This room is what we call a white cube. It is a neutral space, characterized by white walls a square or oblong shaped room and artificial lighting. This form of exhibition gallery emerged in the early 20th century when art was becoming more abstract. The major advantage of this space is its flexibility. Different display mechanisms can be used alongside one another seamlessly. The curator can move the walls or construct new ones they could also choose to construct platforms and plinths of different heights, depending on the exhibition they are curating. The walls can be painted any colour, while wall panels and signage can be changed and moved around according to the needs of the curator. This space has hosted many different exhibitions, from notable Irish artists, both historical and contemporary, to the best costume goes to display of film and television costumes. Now that you looked at a few examples of exhibitions in the Hunt Museum, think about this. How would you lay out an exhibition? How would you organise the objects? Try and come up with a list of different ways of arranging objects. A few of them have been mentioned in this video already. Pause here and write down your answers. The next step is the display mechanisms. We're standing here in the study room. The Hunt Museum's permanent collection is very large and we try to have as much of it on display as possible. A lot of the objects in this case are ones that we're still researching, hence the term study room.
One of our key display mechanisms in this room are the drawers. The main purpose of the drawers is to protect fragile objects. They also help visitors to interact with the display as they can open the drawers and discover new objects for themselves. This room is also a good example of one of the key concepts of the museum. The drawers and the cabinets and the carpets are all designed to give the feel of a family home. This is because John and Gertrude Hunt love to display their collection in their own home. The next room we're going to visit is the treasury. This is where we house a lot of the Hunt Museum's Christian religious art. John Hunt was a very religious man and was baptised as a Catholic in 1925. He and Gertrude had a room in their house where they housed their collection of crucifixes. Let's take a look now and see how the Hunt Museum curates this very special collection. The arches in the treasury are designed to make the room look like a cathedral or church. This links thematically with the objects on display here. One of the most important display mechanisms in this room is this case in the middle of the floor. This central display case gives visitors a 360 degree view of the objects. As you can see, we've also lit the objects from above. These spotlights help the gold and silver in this room shine brightly and draw the eye to the objects. Now that we've looked at a few examples of displays in the Hunt Museum, can you remember at least three ways that objects were displayed? Write down your answers and do a sketch of the displays you've chosen. Pause now and write down your ideas.